Hi, I'm Dennis Reggie. I'm a wedding photographer and a longtime Canon explorer of light. I've had the wonderful opportunity to be testing the, the brand new uh, EOS 5D Mark IV, uh, and it's quite a beast. I'm happy to share some of my insights and experiences with it. I'm hoping uh, you'll enjoy the information that you're about to see. Good. I love that. Good. Good. Beautiful. And you're looking outside, it's great too. In this situation, we have beautiful Adair uh, dressed as a bride today. Thank her very much for that. But I, I thought with all the whiteness and this beaut beauty of the entrance to Parrish's studio, would it not be kind of cool to give the airiness and the lightness? So here, oddly, I must keep it an AWB. I thought the one we liked for this moment is to go with the regular AWB, not the one with the W at the end of it, because we want to have that little bit of warmth. But also, I'm going to actually plus up the exposure by two full stops. I don't want her to be, I don't want the, the camera to expose for all the white around her. I want to brighten up her face and almost make it more, I guess, ethereal. She's almost a, an angel who's just here on earth temporarily in all this cloud of beautiful white. So how are we going to do it? Well, you know I love wide open or close to it. So here I've changed the lenses to the, to the brand new, a 1635 2.8. This is the third generation of this lens. I'm going to use it. I'm going to dial in 2. I'll do 2.8 wide open on this one. But I'm going to do the plus two so that I get a nice, you'll see. I'll show you in a second. So again, Adair, you're just looking outside. I'm at 2.8. I'm in uh, AV, aperture value. And I'm in AWB, the regular one. You're looking outside. Beautiful. I'm going to just, yeah, look at that. I might use my finger to, I'm using my finger right there to lock the exposure. Look outside, darling. Yeah, I love that. Right there. Good, good, good. Excellent. Notice that I squatted down. Why am I squatting down? Because it's a wide angle lens and I'm six foot one. If I'm looking down at her from six foot one, I'm going to have perspective distortion. I'm going to have lines that are converging. So to make myself, well, about, you know, waist or a little bit higher than waist level, I'm going to squat down simply because it's a wide angle lens and I want the camera to be as flat as possible, not looking downward. And I'm going to end up with a look that's that. Well, as you look at it, I'm clearly overexposed on the background, but that's fine because she now has a lovely illumination. There is some warm light on her coming from the lighting that's above her. I kind of like it, the cool light from outdoors, the beautiful floor with the white and black uh, design, and of course the plus two stops gives me the look I need without having to do a spot meter reading on her or some type of a zoom in close, lock the exposure, uh, do an AE lock and then zoom out. I'm not doing any of that. I'm just saying, you know what, I've done it long enough, I'm just going to plus two on the on the meters, I'm going to compensate for the meters uh, reading by plus two. Very simply done, and that's the look. You want to see it? It's all there. I can swipe. Love that. And that is the result. How about that? Given the whiteness of these walls, uh, knowing me, I'm probably going to do a plus up. I'm going to add a third on compensation. I'm in aperture value mode here because I want the lens to be absolutely wide open. I guess I could do it the other way by going, uh, you know, you know, by, by imagining it with a program mode or, 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 or time value. I don't really use those modes ever. I, I can't remember using those in years, but I do use aperture value and I do use manual. My wedding is done uh, overwhelmingly on manual, but in this situation, because it's moving light, uh, this wonderful studio has lights in different places, so, so I'm not having to babysit the, the, the exposure. I'm going to put it in AV. I'm going to put it plus a third. Why is the plus a third? because she's in white, she's surrounded by white, and meters are not balanced for white. They're balanced for 18% gray, as we know, so that means I need to tell the system that this is supposed to be white. How do I do that? Aperture value, dial in, in this case, wide open. I'm F4 on this beautiful Razor Sharp 24105. That's a new lens from Canon just now being released. F4, I'm shooting the puppy at F4, plus a third to compensate for the white. Let me give her a nice bright white face. She comes out again. Let's do it. By the way, ISO, I'm going to take it back up to about 1600 here because yeah, right there. Oh, wow. She's just great. Yeah, beautiful, beautiful. And right there. I'm not going to talk to her really. Now, here is this is not really a wedding, so it's a little bit different. But yeah, yeah, good, good. Very, very nice. But we're getting nice shots. This is all available. That's what I'm getting. Really, really pretty. The exposure is where it should be. I can even have it give me the histo, and the histo is right smack on the money. Uh, she would have been a little dull in the facial lighting had I not compensated. So that extra third brightens her up, 
to offset for the whiteness of the walls. She's dressed in white. If she was in black and the surrounding walls were very dark green, dark, dark red, some darker color, I could actually do a minus compensation. I'd actually take away a third because the, the system's gonna try to overexpose. The system is gonna try to overexpose to make those uh, dark areas 18% gray. The short of it is, if it's white, we add exposure. If it's black, we minus exposure so that the meter has a chance of getting it perfect as it's done there. One of the great new features I love on this, and I'm so glad they did this, I can now swipe. If I wanna say, gosh, are her eyes sharp? I can actually pinch. So it's got pinch and swipe for the first time in a Canon product, I love that. I tell you the other one that's nice is that it basically, if I go to menu, uh, if I have to change something, all of these menus are now touch. I can touch them and get the, instead of having to turn the dial quite as much, They've done a great job with that as well. Let's do one more as well. Again, I normally wouldn't be speaking to her, but I am because this isn't normal. We're just playing around today. Look at you, look to your, look to your right. Yeah, I love that, look at that, good. Let's do the same thing one more time. There again, yeah, she's looking to her, look to her right. Look there, beautiful, I love that, look at that. Very pretty, excellent, good, yeah. What I want are those expressions. When, when the bridesmaid hands the flowers to her, that's what I want because that's real, that's her best buddy, maybe her sister. Uh, her college roommate, I can't do better than saying, give me a smile if she's already with someone that she's, she loves dearly. And, and you know her friend is so proud of her on her wedding day. So the reality, the authenticity of that moment is what I want to capture. So most of my MO at a wedding is actually not speaking. It's just looking, anticipating, documenting, but not directing, not prompting. The moment I say, okay, ladies, look at me, well, Camera awareness is the enemy. It's what I don't want. I want people to not be aware, not be posing and primping and, and making a, a fuss toward the camera. So much of what I do is really look for moments. I'm just a quiet witness with a camera. I'm using the technology when I need it. This is an available light situation. Later on at the wedding reception, no, I'm probably gonna be in manual because it's a darker room. It's a little trickier. I'm gonna tell the camera specifically, not only ISO, which I always tell it, but I'm gonna tell it aperture, and I'm gonna tell it shutter speed because those things are gonna allow me to work. And knowing me at, at the reception, I'm gonna obviously have flash for much of it, for better or worse, but I'm gonna do one other thing. I'm gonna add a CTO, which stands for color temperature orange, a color filtration that matches the ambient space. That's not appropriate for today because it's daylight. Uh, but uh, if we were using tungsten lighting, it would be. But at a wedding reception, uh, my flash is gonna, again, not be pointed at the subject. It's gonna be pointed toward a wall at a distance. And we're gonna add that cap, and I'll show you that in just a minute, to, to give it the color treatment that I want. Flash inherently is 5,500 degrees. We know that. That's electronic flash. It happens that a wedding reception is not 5,500 degrees. It's more like 3,000 or 3,400 or 2,900. Uh, 2700, it's, it's just a different temperature of light. So if we're putting a flash in a room that has a different color balance, it's gonna look blue or white. And that's, those are not good colors really for a wedding reception. I want it to be warm and more of a close match with the ambient temperature color. So aside from exposure, now we introduce the need for color matching. And that's why we're gonna, so often at a wedding, we're gonna have that little gizmo clipped on top. Stay tuned, we'll show you that in just a minute. We see that there is a tungsten light in, uh, in Parrish's great studio, but it's just, it is MR16, just a typical, oh, it's probably running it, I'm gonna guess, it's somewhere in the high 2000 degrees. In other words, it's got a yellowish cast to it, is what we're saying. So the question is, when I photograph her, and if, I, and if I'm gonna use a flash, uh, do I want to use a flash that is the normal default flash? This is the, the brand new uh, uh, 600EX2, which I love. I've got a couple of options here. If, first off, with, we'll do a flash first, then we'll go to ambient next. But with flash, I could do it and throw, if you will, or in this case, bounce light off of a, off of a nearby wall that's maybe 15 feet away. I can bounce 5,500 degree light on her, but I know for a fact that the orangey yellow tinge of the light behind her will continue to be that. In fact, it'll actually accentuate it because we're, at, we're now creating a contrast. We're putting 5,500 degrees on her face and the background is 3,200 or maybe 2,800 degrees, 2,700 degrees Kelvin. 
So it means that the background's gonna have yellow. Does that really bother us or not? Well, what's nice as a professional photographer is that we have that control. So let's do one shot of a dare done with regular flash, 5500. Look, look, that's it, oh, beautiful. Come forward to your friend over there. That's it, that's it right there. Good, good, done, thank you. And then the other option would be, now watch here. We talked about it earlier, now I've got it in my hand. What if we just simply attach this nice device, and I've got it uh, backwards. What if we attach this nice, and it clips right on. That's a new thing, a, a new design for the 600 uh, EX2. This is what we're gonna call it a CTO. The, Canon doesn't quite call it that, but in essence, it's a full correction to bring it to 3200. Nice. I'm gonna leave the camera on AWB, regular AWB, and this time I'm gonna do the exact same photograph, but this time I'm gonna put on her face not 5500 degree light, but in essence, 3200 degree light to more closely match the light behind her. I, I might also add the light on those beautiful flowers. The flowers are lit by a spotlight that are theoretically 2800, they're about 3000 degrees. Why not use a light source that more closely uh, matches the ambient? That's what we're gonna do. Okay, Adair, same thing again. Look to your right, I'm gonna come closer into there. Oh, real pretty, good, good. Again, look, that's it. Excellent, beautiful, look, look at that, excellent. So what I end up with are really some lovely, lovely photos, but here there is no tinge of color behind her. We've now negated it by, of all things, putting a colored filter on our flash. And of course, there is the difference. We can do it with the warmth behind her, or we can do it without. Now we've got the ability very, very simply, I love that. Now, if that's not enough, we now have not one, but two AWB selections. Yes, you can actually select whether you want a warmer version of it or whether you want one that intends to negate all of the tungsteny look and give you white. That's called AWBW, meaning bias toward giving you a real pure white. Well, wedding dresses are in the white zone. You know, you would think it might give you one way or the other, but the truth of it is, We've learned that it depends on the setting. Is it at this reception hall? Is it at this time of day? Are they using gelled lighting? Is it true tungsten? Is there some daylight coming through the windows? Also, what color is the dress? Uh, also, what's the mood we're trying to accomplish? So the truth of it is, it turns out that uh, Canon giving us that selection in a professional uh, five series camera is really to give the photographer one more option that he or she did not have with the beautiful predecessor, the 5D3. So here, we'll take off the flash. Now I've got something I didn't have on my predecessor, 5D3. The 5D4 allows me to touch the, the white balance that I want, touch the selector, and now it says, okay, Dennis, which one do you want? Do you want AWB with white, so that it basically gives you white even under tungsten lighting? Or do you want the traditional AWB, which gives you a little bit of the presence of the warmth? Might be kind of nice, actually. Okay, so we'll, we'll take the first shots, available light, at the traditional AWB. And look, yeah, that's it. Now at, at camera for one, two. Good, thank you. Very pretty. Good, good, good. Right there. I like that. Okay, excellent. Very, very pretty. Now we're gonna do the exact same thing. I'm just gonna simply press that button, press AWB, and this time I'm gonna change it to AWBW, bias toward a pure white. Let's do it again. The camera's gonna make the, look, that's it right there. I love it. Very, look at that. Gorgeous. Yeah, and you're looking away. Yeah, good, good. Thank you. Love that. Okay, great. Let's see how much different it's going to be. Oh, yes, it is. Wow. A whiter look and a warmer look. You know, if I was shooting for a catalog, if I was shooting for maybe a, a maker of fabrics, if I was shooting for some profession that required a more precision look to the color, one that's not biased toward what's comfortable to look at, but what is actually the color that, it's, that is rendered. I guess it's the difference between, you know, what is, uh, what, is, uh, what is true color balance and what is really an optimum look, and there could be two different answers there. So the, in this case, um, I kind of like the warmth. I think it just looks kind of pretty, but gosh, that's nice to have that option. So again, photographers can choose their look Photographer can decide which way they want it to go. They can adjust the ambient adjustment, AWB, two versions, or they can add a flash and either pop on the CTO orange filter or work without it, leaving the flash at a full 5500. It's lovely that they're giving the professional photographer these incredible options. So there it is, the 5D Mark IV. Wow, to me, the ultimate wedding camera. Of course, Parrish may argue that, saying it's the ultimate portrait commercial glamour camera, or maybe if George Lepp was here, he would say it was the ultimate wildlife camera, but 
Canon's got a hit on their hands here. I can't imagine from a wedding photographer's point of view who wouldn't want one, two of these in their camera bag every weekend. I know I'll have them and use them. The right size of uh, chip, 30 megapixel, sounds perfect. Beautiful ergonomics, a refinement of the ultra sharp images. Uh, what, a, what an ideal tool, the right weight, the right amount of quietness. Just a perfect Saturday afternoon documenting some young couples, volume one, as they begin their life together.